Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe. A shadow graph enables you to build your shaders visually. Instead of hard writing code, you create and connect nodes in a graph network. The graph framework gives instant feedback on the changes, and it's simple enough that new users can become involved in shader creation. In our previous episode, we have discussed how to start with the shader graph in Unity and achieve several examples such as water shadow, Fresnel effects, hologram, and noise ellipse shader. My goal for this episode is create another shader, Static Noise TV Shader. During the process, we will be familiar with more common nodes in shader graph, including their descriptions and return values. As always, the link for the project repository is on the description below. You can also choose to read the text version of this episode. Okay, let's get into it. Let's open up Unity, and currently we are using our previous project. Let's disable this 3D plan first. Simply right click anywhere in the hierarchy, go to 3D object, and select the plan. Drag one unit texture into our project. Let's create a new material called Noise TV Material. Then, drag this material into the plan game object in the scene. To create a shader graph asset, you click the Create menu in the project window and select Shader from the drop down. In this example, we choose to unlight graph. This will create a shadow graph asset in the project. You can double click on the assets to bring up the shadow graph edit window. When you open the shadow graph, you start with a master node. Since our target is making Unity logo texture with the static noise shadow. First, search for texture 2D assets. This node defines one constant texture 2D assets for use in the shader. Select the Unity logo texture. To sample the texture 2D assets, it should be used in conjunction with the sample texture 2D node. Connect the output RGBA with the color on master node. Right click on the preview window and select different objects for your object surface. We have one input UV based on the sample texture. Let's create one UV node. In this case, we want to display the noise effect, so that we definitely need to add one simple noise node. Before adding the simple noise node, we want to think about the principle of the UV node we talked about before. As we know, the letter U and V represent the axis of the 2D texture, because XYZ are already used to represent the axis of the 3D object in the model space. We can lock U and V as X and Y. Actually, there is the sense that as vector 4 type value such as x, y, z, w, and r, g, b, a. So, if the u is r, v is g, we can make two images, red and green. The, if there is only one unit in the uv map, we can use gradient color to create another two images from 0 to 1. 0 means rgb's value is 0, 0, 0. Finally, if we try to overlap these two images together and choose one blend mode. You will notice that we will receive one image looks like our UV node color. This is the reason why our UV node has this color. Now we want the noise effect. We want to only get a horizontal black and white line on the screen. We use split node, which splits the input vector into four vector one outputs R, G, B, A. We choose to connect output G with the UV input. The reason why we select the output G instead of the output R is that G is represent Y axis. We have to keep the Y value at the same value. Now we can combine the UV node with the output simple noise. You can create another UV node or directly drag our left UV output node. In our previous episodes, we used multiply node to combine these two nodes. However, the effect looks more strong. In here, we need to use add node instead of multiply node. Add node returns the sum of the two input values A and B.
if it still looks so strong, we can create multiply node. We can drag the input B value for the better result. We want the static's noise effect can move horizontally. For this to work, we create another node called Victor2 node and keep the Y value to zero so that the static's noise will only move in X axis. Another thing that concerns us is dynamically display the static noise effect. Create one time node which provides access to various time parameter in the shader. If we want to randomly appear the static nodes, let's create simple noise node. Simple noise generates a gradient or Boolean noise based on input UV. The scale of the generated noises is controlled by input scale. Then using multiply node to connect with each other. Save the assets and bank to Unity. Select the 3D plan game object and drag the shader into here. Cool. Bank to Unity, I would like to introduce another node to make the static noise effects look more real. Currently, each frame, we will call this static noise effect. However, in the real world, sometimes the effects appear randomly and sometimes the status is normal. Step node returns true if the value is greater than or equal to the value of the import agent, otherwise returns zero. Try to adjust the step value and check it out. If you still feel so fast and a little weird, you can add another node such as fractions node in order to make the effects slow down and looks more real. It depends on your game. Nice. Also, you can try to expand and add more previous nodes together. Go ahead and try to achieve other visual shaders. Alright, this is the end of this video. To learn more about the underlying material models, I highly recommend you to check out the existing Unity Standard shader document. You can download the project from the description below. By the way, you can join our server on Discord. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share with friends, and subscribe to my channel. There's much more to come. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. You are the best.